A warm welcome and wishing the best of the day ahead to all delegates uniting with us today on this online platform for Week 15, Build Bharat, Safe and Secure India, a 25-week series which has commenced from 26th of July 2020, a purely knowledge-sharing webinar series successfully progressing each Sunday. We are overwhelmed for all your support, patience and time for connecting with us today. We are sure you will find this worthy and are excited to attend the webinar. In case of any questions or query arising during the webinar, we request you to please type in using the Q&A section or raise hand. During the webinar, also keep an eye on the chat section for links on our previous sessions and to join our East Park group community. For case studies, pocket guides, advisories, newsletters on fire safety and security. We have our group CEO, Mr. Heman Khatse, who will lead this session. Let us proceed the session with a small prayer. Very good morning, everyone. Um, Afrin, I'm audible. Yes, sir. So welcome back again uh, on week 15 episode session uh, of Build Bharat series. It has been really uh, exciting for all our team to be with you every Sunday with some uh, new information, new sharing, new knowledge uh, that will help each of each one of you here coming in from different and diverse background. Today, in fact, um, since we are in a age of almost more than um, half of our series that we have completed, uh, I wanted to actually go back and look at what exactly has happened in a very quick manner so that we can recap very quickly uh, how we started the journey on 26 July, where we stand and what's the way to go. I remember uh, Mr. Reddy asked me one question during one of the session that why don't you give what is going to come in, in next. So uh, it will be help. It will be helpful for you to decide not to come on or, or to come. So I said my answer was very simple and straight that uh, each session is actually going to help everyone. It is not something that you know the subject or you do not know the subject, whether you are involved in the, in the subject or you are not involved in the subject. You may have that particular aspect in the organization existing or do not have an existing. But when you know both the side of the coin, we never know what stage that information can help you and 
protect your life or organization in somewhere because ultimately what we are talking about is all about saving somebody's life and property so this has been a very um, very systematic way that we have started the series a uh, very thoughtful way and as i mentioned in the first itself in a very shuddh manner in a very pure purified manner because we had no conditions and uh, there is the unconditional love and uh, uh, bhav that we have in in presenting this webinar series in fact um, uh, many of us many of you actually have uh, got me one question that why are you doing it free can you just marginally uh, charge some where people we are willing to pay because there is so much of value people are getting it i said there is certain this certain knowledge that you have or everybody has which is always available to give it to the society as a payback and you are not supposed to charge but at the same time when you are running a business not a charity organization you can't give everything as a free so always as a organization we will have certain things which we will have to charge because there is a uh, there is a different background or there is a different purpose all together of charging it because there is a time involved there is a resources involved there are a lot of other things involved wherein you are supposed to charge and you you are charging ethically but there is always a massive information that is available as you go along in your life which is available for free and which should be free and that's what our whole intent so we started the journey uh, talking about how we are going to plan this entire series what's the safety security relationship and uh, how this is actually going to be meaningful for you the entire map and uh, we have presented in the first week and then we started slowly uh, giving the analysis on how security culture or sorry safety culture and security is part of it is going to be formed in the organization what are those ingredients how people can converse with each other what's a top level conversation or leadership uh, commitment that are required in terms of forming a safety culture in the organization so we we have we have uh, given a lot of insight in in building that culture in the organization then we also looked at the aspect where the purpose can be defined at every individual level working in the organization so that they are not doing this job as a means of job but they are doing it as a seva and as a as a uh, responsibility or responsiveness that they have to protect their life and property or as well as protecting somebody's life and protecting somebody's property so this is the what the mindset which it is required in the in the organization in the people in the organization and it is always going to come from top we then got into the technical aspect of it understanding what are the codes and standards what is the difference between codes and standard how this can actually help you to build the right way of safety in the organization specifically fire and security as such so there are many gaps in the industry in understanding codes and standard because it is like a untouched baby people don't want to touch it because people consider this like atom bomb it's like a very technical thing i don't know to get in wall but it is not there is a uh, there is exposure to every people in the organization that you need to have or you must have in terms of codes and standards and how it can help your your uh, uh, entire organization as such then we also extended our discussion with understanding the performance based standard i mean there is a prescriptive based uh, prescriptive codes and there is a performance based code how they can complement each other what are the areas where you can use both where is the area where you can use either one so that's again a very interesting discussion that we had in terms of understanding codes and and uh, standard we also uh, looked at building system integration when you are talking about 
fire and uh, security systems, there are always auxiliary system that needs to be attached, that needs to be communicated, and it's called integration. And uh, the more complex, more the, more the larger organization is, this is going to be critical factor in implementation. But unless until you design it, unless until you plan it, you'll not be able to get the, those on the ground. So what are those integration requirement, how this can be achieved, and what are the ways and means to achieve it? Another uh, petal that we, we added in terms of understanding the human behavior and factors in into your design element. What are those? Because you can't just follow the course and standard by clause and clause and expect that to be implemented on ground. You also have to consider as a user, what is that element in my in my facility, how they are going to respond, what are their constraints, what are the limitations, and that's how these human factors need to be ingrained at the design planning and which will actually make your system more more uh, relevant more meaningful more purposeful so uh, that's again uh, we we looked at a lot of case studies world trade tower how this can be done what happened there and we explained this this concept very well fire security strategy is the one that is the basis of your entire or you can say it's a foundation of your design because unless until you are strategic in your mind uh, in dealing and mitigating the the fire or safety, you are not able to come up with the right roadmap. So strategy, how this can be developed? What are the ingredients for planning of those uh, uh, strategy? What are the content of strategy and how it can come from the user perspective? Consultant, architect, vendor can always follow based on your strategy, but essentially what it means that strategy initiation has to be done from the user mind. It is not going to come from outside. It has to be from inside. We also looked at as a other side of the coin, which is engineering side. I mean, design is the one aspect, but then engineering is another aspect and how this engineering is related to the nature of the science, mother nature of the science, because when you understand the nature, you'll be able to correlate with the science and then you'll be able to adapt that into an engineering or technology. So our fundamentals have to be very crystal clear in understanding the entire acronym or entire system architecture, where it is coming from, whether it's a smoke, fire, or any safety or security, it is always coming from the nature. It is coming from the human nature. And that's how once you understand that nature well, you're able to implement with a lot of tools, a lot of technology and a lot of engineering mindset, because then there is a direct relationship between your nature, science and engineering. So that's a kind of fundamental, which is very, very uh, important. Uh, and uh, I'm sure this would have uh, opened your eyes to a great extent in understanding the, the complexity of, of the engineering. Once you understand the course engineering practices, how do you develop a balanced fire protection strategy? I mean, when we are seeing a balance, it has a very, very big weightage because you cannot be on very minimal side or low side or conservative side. At the same time, we cannot be overspending on the system that are maybe uh, once in lifetime may be useful. So how do you estimate it right? Considering the risk, considering the hazards, considering the um, uh, environment that you are in, how do you take the help of codes and engineering and best practices and come up your fire protection strategy? I mean, we specifically spend a lot of time on understanding this strategy because it is very, very important. And most of the people that I have come across in my 27, say, 27 years of career is that people do not have that openness or mindset in understanding and creating that approach. They rely on the external world. They rely on the, on the uh, vendor who is going to come and sell their product. So we have to respect. See, there are many stakeholders apart from you. You are as a customer, as a center, but at the same time, 
uh, when you're dealing with this particular uh, fire and security systems, your stakeholders are too many. OEM, OEM is there to what? Sell the technology and feature. So they will always push you for, for better technology, better differentiation product, and that's how they are going to be there with you. Your integrators, your contractors, they are there to execute the projects. They want to make sure that your project, whatever been assigned for, they will finish it off meeting the requirement. So they are there to execute the plan. Architect is to fulfill the requirement, what has been assigned to them. They may have very limited knowledge exposure in terms of fire and life safety, but you have to respect their limitations. There are many cases where not necessarily that end user customer engages architect by default. Then that's a big bang because we, uh, many components specifically on, on FLS side are actually handled by architect. Whether it's egress, whether it's assembly area, exit width, staircases, your shafts, all these things are part of your building plan and is taken care by architects. It is not even known by most of the integrators on this world because it's not their expertise. You don't expect for them to get involved. So how do you, the, the gap is more in case you do not have a, a competent architect on board. But again, they have a valid contribution in fulfilling the requirement what you have been assigned for, meeting the codes and standards. And then of course, you have a consultant which is specific consultants, they are there to plan the building, comply the requirements, comply the codes and standards and give you the optimal solution. And this is what your strategy, which is going to be contributing by the consultant. So you can have a general MVP consultant or you can have a specialized uh, fire consultants. That's purely your choice, but you have to see that they are competent. They have all enough exposures to come up with the right balanced fire protection strategy. And of course, you are in the middle. Your, your primarily requirement is to comply the requirement and make sure that it is fulfilled from all the angles. But when you focus only on compliance, then you don't go beyond compliance. Then the requirement becomes just a very minuscule way because all the stakeholders are going to understand that you're only focusing on compliance, not beyond. Many of uh, you have asked me one question in one of the seminar that in the industry today, specifically in our country, there are very less professional contractors or you know uh, people who are having adequate knowledge. My question to this question is again asking and the same question to yourself, how adequately you are informed, how adequately you are trained, how adequately you are professional because if you expect the professionalism to come from an integrator, it starts within you. You need to be first professional in demanding that professionalism from the integrator that you are appointing. Then only you, you can get that professional inside your facility. And people do not have that mindset. They look at the pinpointing fingers to the external world rather than pinpointing towards them. And that's how the irony today if you are focusing very, very minuscule way, only on meeting the minimum requirement, then you get minimum. How you expect maximum to come to you? So this is the whole cycle of, of entire, uh, uh, entire this thing. And specifically why it is important that we need to understand this critically because fire is something that is very specialized uh, domain it cannot be compromised. HVAC, all our, all, all our layers, they are, the, they are uh, the building requirements or system requirement, but when it comes to fire and life safety, it is something that is going to directly affect your, your life and property. So that's as you need to really have a differentiation and that's as in many customers or many end users are actually engaging people who are actually competent and having that domain knowledge, whether it's an integrator, whether it's a consultant, whether it's an architect, 
because they have dependence on them to come and help them to fulfill the requirement so this is a very very important aspect i thought i'll just spend little more time on understanding and refreshing what i have said very important concept that we elaborated and i think we spent uh, almost one and a half uh, one and a half week um, session on understanding the smoke management how the smoke management is going to be effectively designed and planned in the facility uh, how it it has to be done what are the system that is required to be talking to it is not just like a one standalone system that you can you can have so various building system requirement needs to be understand and plan your effective smoke management and then pressurization is another concept that is most critical and and uh, i think mr lalit uh, have asked me to include this so i spent little uh, more time in in getting into the depth of pressurization how positive positive pressurization how negative pressurization can help you to mitigate your smoke challenge because the smoke is the one that is going to kill the people and we we all know for sure but when you know that smoke is going to be a killing agent how do you treat with that how do you deal with that you can't just say that okay my property has got um a lot of vulnerability in smoke i don't know how to how to do it but if you are sitting in that on that dilemma sitting on the fence you don't do anything then one day is going to be your witness test that it will ask you nature is going to ask you and say that what you have done up to so smoke management is very very important aspect and it needs to be planned it has to be engineered it has to be communicated with a lot of auxiliary systems and fire is the one very very important then we switched over to security understood uh, how the risk can be defined what is that risk means to you when you are talking about physical uh, security what are the what are the elements that are complementing to your understanding the risk of your facility so uh, that's again a very very important uh, phase of of uh, design planning and uh, more the larger organization you have more the theft that you have more vulnerability you have and that's what the risk management actually going to be helping you to mitigate your your those risk and parameters we extend the discussion uh, in terms of risk assessment uh, how this design strategy is going to be uh, which is going to start with risk assessment but in terms of security design engineering how are you going to put your elements together so that your entire facility becomes secure it's not a deployment of cct cameras anywhere and everywhere there is a logic there is engineering there is a nature behind it so how do you plan those controls access controls uh, how do you plan your your security management software and get into the command control center where you can monitor and control the entire facility as such what are the integration that are required uh, with the fire systems or other other uh, elevator systems and other auxiliary systems that are required so we we discussed at length so i think overall it was it was a very meaningful journey uh, not only for you even for me to take you through all this 14 episodes till now and now we are touching into the 15th episode today and getting into the construction phase installation phase because till now we have covered the planning phase now we are today we are uh, we are entering into a middle part of it which is the installation phase because why it is important i'll come to you uh, in a minute uh, on on this today's topic but let me also give you a very quickly and then maybe ask you any questions any queries that you may have till now so prepare your questions you can put it in q and a or you can ask raise your hand in the meantime i'll just give you a uh, very quickly a snapshot which is for our journey that is going to be ahead for next th three months what are the topic that we are going to cover so that you are mentally prepared and i am sure mr reddy uh, will be smiling uh, by looking at this uh, agenda that i am going to sharing so we will continue the discussion uh, extending the security part of it because since we are covering fire safety security all three elements put together i want to give some uh, weightage on understanding the consideration required for security systems installations 
what are the considerations required when you are when you are deploying the security system i think one session is not going to be adequate but i don't know it's a challenge for me to accommodate because we need to finish it off this in 25 weeks so testing commissioning is a very very critical phase for um, fire and safety system as such or security system as such but that is a tail end and where people don't give much importance and that is because they do not have that exposure or they shy away in getting into the technicalities of it but if you fail in testing and commissioning your entire investment on that particular uh, capital that entire element may not be 100% fulfilled because you have a fire alarm system but if it is not commissioned properly and it is just sitting with troubles and faults and then without any integration because you never tested it you never commissioned it you never handed over and you never taken over that systems so what are those testing and commissioning requirement and now there is nfpa standard uh, for specifically till now we didn't have a standard now we have a standard so uh, we'll try and cover those aspect in a in a very brief way on testing and commissioning and then another important element is taking over the system and project sign off i have seen many projects not only small even uh, medium and large scale projects are halfly done that means the contractor either is run away or he is completely uh, 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 taken the advantage of not knowing the systems by you and then the system is never been commissioned never been handed over never been tested and and you don't have the complete advantage of that technology or tools or system that you own and this is the very important phase taking over and project sign off how do you ensure that everything is completed in all respect what you have planned in the beginning and specifically this problem will come when you do not have a third party people involved when you have only internal dependency then you need to spend more time but if you have external people then your job is easy but even though this phase very less people involve the third party people because by that time the project gets elongated people lose interest people lose focus they have a financial constraint they have a site constraint and that's how this is limited to only specific individuals who are who are asking for it then definitely we will need at least uh, two weeks two sessions on understanding the phase of operation and maintenance of fire and security separately we will take it up so that we can have a a very clear uh, clear demarcation of understanding what is the thing that you need to do as a owner on fire and security what are the requirements and that's how we started the discussion on understanding the codes and awareness the codes and engineering codes and standard will help you here in this phase when you are the actual owner of that system because you are owning that system not the contractor not the consultant not the architect so whatever investment you have made is worthy only when you maintain it when you operate it well and then of course uh, uh, that's my favorite topic training we will very very specifically focused and cover one session on it because uh, training now in fact after the pandemic things have totally changed the concept have changed we are getting into the totally different dimensions so till uh, march training was a different concept but come in october it's a totally different concept so now how we are going to deal with that training requirements uh, what are the objectives and purpose of getting that training how make sure that your training actually going to help people in changing the mindset so all these things will will cover in training part uh, lastly we'll cover on the audit and review part uh, because once you have a good planning good designing good engineering good installation you are maintaining it but you don't have to necessarily stop there it has to be continuous cycle and unless until you keep on reviewing that system well and revisiting all your system adequacy in the form of audit it could be internal it could be external you will not be able to uh, have that asset well protected so how this audit is going to be helpful for maintaining that cycle periodically we'll cover that and of course we'll cover the documentation management requirement because many of uh, the facilities sitting in this world are having very limited or no information what they own if you get into any facility and tell them that what pump capacity you have they said i don't know which where, where is the uh, uh, where which is the year that you have installed the hydrant system we don't know so there are many basic parameters uh, people the owner 
do not have the access because of the documentation management because they don't have any document they have never created they never invested time money resources on making those documents so how this is going to be important and then of course the lastly we will cover when you are understanding the entire uh, entire concept altogether how do you take your organization to a sustainable and excellence level how you make your organization standing out at a global level at a at a uh, international uh, scale level so this is what the lastly that we will cover to make your journey um, as a as a safe organization to a totally global level making the best out of it and at the same time sustainable organization because it has, it has to be sustainable so we'll cover what is sustainability factor also into the into the into the in this session as such last session that we will have on the first week of january and we are going to end our uh, this relationship of course we'll continue our engagement in future in various forms but this build bharat is going to end when you are seeing 2021 and specifically i have chosen this uh, date week because that year is going to be totally new year for each one of you it will be totally new game all together and we are going to have this a new beginning so we are going to end this session more on a q and a rather than uh, giving anything special because of course i will refresh everything but i would encourage maximum people to come up and and have questions and answer it doesn't matter we take more than one and a half hour or two or time will not be constant but i want to have a very clear interaction with you on that day uh, when we are actually departing so this is what uh, overall uh, plan that we have uh, i thought i'll i'll spend uh, 10 minutes on on this particular aspect uh, so that you get a crystal clarity uh, those who are recurring members here uh, can get a total eyesight uh, and insight how we are going to take this journey ahead and our our effort is very very uh, sincere and very clear that we want to make best out of it we don't want to leave any any uh, gaps in the minds that is why i always ask you to ask questions in case you have any any interesting and definitely we will try and see that your your uh, when you are leaving this session you have always better clarity than you had so this is what overall uh, uh, overall uh, journey that that i want to have any questions any questions so far uh, uh, please raise your hand so that uh, i know what we are doing is is right Uh, what your plan is right and uh, uh, we can we can help you in a better way so um uh, let me see if there is any hand raised by anyone or any questions so please raise your hand in case you have any questions um till now mr narayan reddy in case you have uh, because this was specifically meant for you that i have said that i will describe at this 15 week session rather than had i been intimated in you in the second week itself then probably uh, people have uh, made choices in in making it but i'm sure when you attend it you definitely gain a lot of inside knowledge on it so uh, any questions any query till now before we proceed to the today's topic yeah so no questions very good but no questions sometimes are dangerous uh okay nice recap thank you mr reddy it was meant for you only because that was your uh, your wish uh, list so okay good uh, but feel free to ask any questions uh, we'll definitely try and answer it um so let me just switch over to the uh to the topic that are that is going to be today's topic on understanding the installation requirement because no matter how good your engineering is how good your planning is it is equally important that you spend equal amount of time and resources in getting it executed although you will have a very specialist contractor on board who has a very good uh, track record history capability all these things fine but as a user as a as a system owner 
it is important that you should get involved deeply not challenging their their requirement but understanding the requirement so that you get best out of it so this is the whole whole intent of of my uh, you know uh, today's session is all about so let me just you know ask a uh, question here so that you know we can start with the well uh, refresh mind so first question that you can see on the screen what are three components that make your effective fire prevention plan so what are those ingredients three ingredients you have to choose whether it's education permits engineering whether it's education code enforcement engineering whether it's plan review code enforcement engineering or whether it's education fire modeling engineering so what is this right answer you think that when it talks about fire prevention because that's what we have said we have already discussed in in length what is this fire prevention what is the fire protection but then as a user you should be very crystal clear in getting this right yeah a little confusing question so i'm sure you are taking time but doesn't matter i'll give another 10 second to think and and click it's very very uh, good to brainstorm yourself sometime so pick up the right answer three ingredients for fire prevention yeah many of you are still thinking click it so that we can go to the next question i got two questions here today yeah few more yeah very good okay done so then let me end up all here and share the result here so as i mentioned it was a little confusing question so that since people were fumbled in all the four probability all the four have been clicked which is which is which shows that it is not a clear answer uh, so technically uh, right now the the poll shows that plan review code enforcement and engineering 38% is the one that is the highest rating but technically it is it is a wrong an answer the second one is the right answer education is of course key code enforcement is the important key and engineering and code enforcement is is going to be the one that is going to be part of every installation during installation phase because if you don't enforce the code at during installations you will not be able to so right answer is education code enforcement and engineering because without education there is nothing that fire prevention can happen uh, let me just uh, take to the next poll uh here is a question uh, oh there are two questions in fact um why it is important to record the code addition used to build the building like what you talk about nfpa 13 2016 nbc 2016 so likewise you know you have got addition of code so why it is important that you to record that while building the plan because it is a future building code cannot be used for the modification or it is because of uh, this is a code future inspector will use this for inspection inspect the building or because the building code changes are not always retroactive because it is the addition that we enforce so what do you think that correct answer could be for this question so hit it right way and another question that i have mentioned is fill in the blank are actually designed as contract document and not necessarily just a scope of work documents and first form of communications among as designer contractor or so those could be contract document plans document bidding schedule or specification so we covered many aspect in our session so this is kind of a recap or test that you will know uh, how we have learned so far so take a time <clears throat> another 15 second i will give you for correct answer first question again four options 
second question again uh, four answer so you have to see what is what is relevant according to you uh, these are the question actually starts on a thinking mode you still start thinking of what is the correct answer and uh, whether i'm doing it right or not whether i'm first of all whether i'm doing it or not and then doing it right or not so uh, five more seconds i can give you uh, just click on any right answer for both the questions and then we can end the poll good still more people to answer okay so i will end the poll here now because we have to move so i'm sharing the result here the first question most of the people say that it is this is a code future inspector will is to inspect the building but the correct answer is is already there in the answer because building code changes are not always retroactive that's the correct answer yeah not the future inspector with the inspector building basically so you have to see that uh, building code changes are not always retro that means if it is a building nbc 2016 code you cannot technically apply 2016 code for the construction which has happened in 2015 right you can always upgrade to the 2016 level but you cannot apply so that's very important and it's a very important fact that you should understand the second one is again uh, the correct answer is 63% what people have heard is exactly correct answer specifications and we spent some amount of an understanding in our course as standard session what is the role of specification because mostly people consider the contract document the purchase order the work order as the base no that's just a merely a payment billing schedule it's just a commercial uh, angle but when you are talking about uh, uh, executing the plan and co communication with a contractor specification should are the are the bible or the base document so uh, very good thank you so much for your time um, i think it was it was interesting so let's understand this uh, installation phase and i mentioned to you why it is important because this is a time or this is a phase where your plans are getting implemented your plans are getting executed so um okay one question had come from mr fardan these sessions will cover any particular industry no there is nothing that kind of industry that we are talking about specifically it will be purely um uh, uh, generic on that particular topic so industry focus is not specific there but in case you have any specific questions about your industry you can always throw up okay good question thank you for that so uh, this phase there is certain people who are investing a lot and there are certain people who are investing nil or no those people who are investing a lot because they know the importance because of the size of the project and that's when they have dependency on the external or external plus internal resources to monitor it and measure it whether it has been done or not and there is a certain section of the community who's not giving any importance because their purchase order is actually the last stage of execution they think that when my purchase department have placed the order on the supplier or a vendor or a contractor or integrator my job gets finished see you later and that's how they get a surprise at the later stage when they actually face the system readiness they consider that what i have designed is apple and what i get is a custard apple and because you don't get involved in between technically contractually uh, in all the manners then surprises will often come to you and that's reason this is very important phase that that you need to understand the first element is that it begins with what stage is a shop drawing stage whether it's a fire or so and this is again not with specific industry this is not with specific system you can consider this as fire safety security system when you are doing a reasonably sizable project which is going to take some few weeks few months few years 
then I'm talking about this particular aspect here in understanding your installation phase. Because if it is going to take, say, one week's time, probably you have less involvement. You can really check your involvement could be there. But if it is going to take eight months' time, then chances are that you may have certain restrictions. That's when we are trying to cover here for a longer duration projects. What's your involvement? So first stage is actually the shop drawings. Many people do not have the meaning right manner. What is the difference between your normal drawings and shop drawings? Yeah. Isn't any, but anybody uh, can differentiate what is a shop drawing? Uh, I can, you can raise the hand. I can, I can hear from you. What is the shop drawing means to you? Yeah, you can raise the hand. I can unmute you. Yeah, today uh, people are not excited to raising hands. Why? Okay, so no problem. Uh, I thought I'll make you speak. So that's what I'm asking you, but doesn't matter. Um, so basically, shop drawing is a is a specific document prepared by the integrator or entity who is executing the project in getting the dimensional details, getting the details which are going to be actually implemented at site. So there is a difference between your design layout or it could be your tender drawing or concept drawing and the shop drawing. Shop drawing is something detailed, which is dimensional, exact dimension. If it is a pipe shown where the support is coming in, what is the type of support that I'm going to use it? Is it going to be pedestal support or is it going to be structural support? What is the spacing there? You know, to that extent. If it is a sprinkler, then what is my sprinkler to the ceiling distance? What is the wall and first sprinkler distance? So all those details are actually captured in the shop drawings and that becomes the basis of construction. But many of the contracts here, and specifically fire, I, I know for sure, security also to some extent, where people don't give that much of importance in developing those shop drawings because two reasons. One is the lack of awareness. What is this shop drawing? So I, what is the thing that I can ask from it? And then secondly, the entity who is executing has also limitations. They may not have that kind of a design capability to develop the shop drawings, but it is important then comes to you that you, when you select the integrator, make sure that they have a capability. And this is how your professionalism starts here. You can't expect a contractor to get an answer when they are on board and asking them to develop the shop drawings and when they get an answer that, okay, I do not have capacity. So that's then it is important that your evaluation criteria when you select a contractor or integrator on board should have all these ingredients and this is one of the ingredients. What is their capability, technical capability in understanding the course? At many cases, the tender drawings are made because tender drawings or concept drawings are basically made in a, in a, in a very little generic way because at that time the detailing is not available. The construction is not the advanced stage level. So it, it had a lot of assumptions and those assumptions have to be challenged or has to be uh, clarified in the form of shop drawings and when integrator himself do not do not have that kind of a capability or uh, you know capacity both in developing and understanding this plan then we have a lot of tussle and then what will happen the actual installation will suffer because you spend a lot of time in making sure that they understand what the design intent is and what you are doing it but if the shop drawings are very, very crystal clear and they can read, interpret and implement at site, then probably you will have no surprises. So message here, I want to give you that, make sure that every contract that you do, specifically medium and long duration projects are supported by shop drawings. And those are the detailed drawings which will come from integrator where you have no ambiguity in terms of understanding how my installation is going to look like, whether it's a sprinkler system, whether it's access control system, whether it's a uh, fire alarm system or an extinguisher layout, whatever it is. Very, very crystal clear way, you should be able to identify 
where my extinguisher is going to sit and stand where is my detector is going to be placed what height at it is because when you know that this drawing or this stage is going to be my actual installations maybe at that stage you need to refine your your basic intent because not necessary that every drawing that has been made by a consultant at the tender stage or at the concept stage will have a 100% implementation capacity it may not be implemented it needs revisit it needs retro uh, it needs review uh, based on the site conditions because site conditions are going to be changing every day till the construction is going to be on very few projects which are which are monitored at a level where a micro level engineering is been uh, focused and then only it is released to the contractors but revisions will happen and this is a stage where you need to see that uh, you are able to capture the site conditions and if there is any change required you need to revisit it i mean at many stages in fact i have come across a, a situation where a contract was awarded to a integration contractor sprinkler contractor and later on the query came in from the insurance uh, insurance company saying that this particular project is designated as seismic zone 4 and you need to incorporate the seismic bracings for the fire sprinkler systems it was a miss out miss out element in the tender drawing maybe at that time the consultant didn't have visibility didn't have a knowledge didn't have that uh, thought process right in estimating that this project is sitting in an earthquake zone and we need to incorporate this based on this particular code in equip 13 or or uh, factory mutual code but then it's good that during the shop drawing stage if it is identified you need to go back to the you know drawing board stage get it incorporated so that you can execute it so there are many changes that may happen and unless until this critical design review that can happen at at site at during construction says you will not be able to eliminate uh, surprises you will get lot of surprises you will get lot of changes so it's very very important that we need to you need to uh, get focused uh, there are lot of detailing and even short drawings for that matter it is a requirement by nap 13 it is requirement by the codes that that the installer needs to furnish all the details and those are the details there so it is not coming from something like newly it is not just a best practice it is even a code practice and many people are not aware about how the shop drawings are been prepared and how it is going to help for the for the installer then the second comes your your developing your data sheets in line with the specification and that's what i mentioned in the questionnaire the specification contributes a lot not the scope of work not the purchase order not the bill of material it's a specification how the specifications have been incorporated because not to say that your your even bill of material is able to capture each and every element there is always condition apply there is always something that is been built into the bill of material so what is that built in coverage this is what your your Uh, technical data sheet is going to capture what element are you going to use whether it is listed and approved or not like maybe specification i'll tell you there is a requirement that you will underwriters laboratory stroke factory mutual fm but not to say that you will get a product which will have both maybe there is certain oem or there is certain manufacturer who will produce your underwriters laboratory only but do not have factory mutual so is it an acceptable to you or not and that's what your your data sheets actually going to talk about it specify that what is going to come into the site but unless until you you select and spend a time in selection of right product and equipment which is adhering to your specification requirement or contract or your uh, drawings requirement then there won't be any mismatch then you know exactly it is going to be in order and there are many instances that i have seen where simplicity fire doors people do not produce the data sheets on time before 
the procurement stage and the five door rating which has come on site is just one hour rated it should have been two hour rated now you can't change 35 doors from the site and get it replaced with one hour door to two door because it's going to cost a lot so the missing element here is that you are not developed the data sheet you are not reviewed the data sheet and you are not circulated within the stakeholders and that's a missing link so it's very very important at the installation phase you produce data sheets which are added into the spec so that any deviation that is there it should be it should be reviewed acceptable to all the stakeholders and specifically this is related to the large capital cost equipment uh, but of course it is also related to the uh, nut and bolts also the anchor fasteners also the many elements that are going in because more you go detailed you have more control on the project and that's that's a very important phase then the third stage comes as a procurement when you are knowing it what you have then what are those acceptable manufacturers that i can have or i have a flexibility to get it which is going to meet my requirement so procurement is is a very important stage where you need to see that the procurement is rightly done technically and in terms of your project requirement and then of course the construction starts at site you already have data sheets approved you already have materials flowing into the site based on the delivery plan and the real comes here as a installation so are you having a connectivity with your shop drawings because if you don't have a connectivity with this here then the installation goes in north direction your shop drawings in south direction you have no connection maybe you have given lot of uh, calculations you have given lot of supportings in in forming the shop drawings but in reality if the installation is going to be only and only based on the project manager choice not looking into the design what you have plan then probably you will definitely get lot of surprises you will get lot of deviations and the functionally the system will not be the same purpose that is going to be thought at the, at the at the drawing board stage so how do you are going to monitor those installations are you going to have in house people or are you going to have external people how frequently are you going to review that that deviations so that there are there is a quality control on the entire installation process as such so this is this is very very important uh, phase that needs to be taken care by every every uh, owner of uh, the company the uh, end user of the company periodical inspections and this is what it means because there are cases where you already have a certificate as a paper document to prove that this particular product is listed and approved but how do you correlate this material data sheet with actually reality so there is a relation but there is a relation between shop drawing and ins installation and there is a direct relationship between inspection and your data sheets are you able to see that mark on the product that you get at site as underwriters laboratory as factory mutual as two or rated so this is what your inspection stage which will which will clear that air and many of the people just because they have a lack of constraint in terms of resource time technicalities information they just depend on the paper certify the bill pay the bill and then when actually the requirement comes to test the system you fail because you don't have the right product at site you never verified it you never validated it so there are very very base i mean of course you can go to the factory level to inspect whether what the pump you are going to get into the site that's a that's a very very high level of inspection but at least have basic level of inspection based on the criticality of the project based on the size of the project based on the nature of the uh, project and based on the capital investment that you are making on the on the particular product you see what level you need to go into the level of uh, inspection but make sure that you validate what you have and what to get then comes the the last stage which is directly connected with the shop drawings which is as built layout 
Now there is a difference between as built layout. Now I'm sure I will not ask this question as as um, uh, this is a layman question, and I'm sure everybody know what this what this mean to you. As built layout is nothing but a mirror image of what you see on the on the site or the installations, and what you see on the paper is same. If it is a corridor of 10 meter sitting with two detectors, those two detectors are actually replicated on that corridor that you see on the line. And that is what is, is shop as build layout is all about. And irony today is that just because during installation, we don't spend enough time on this as build layout, we just depend on the shop drawings and complete the project, you have a lot of issues during operation and maintenance, which you are going to discuss what is the stage requirement. And this is the element which is going to help during your operation and maintenance requirement or stage. And it is always related to the shop drawing. So as and when you finish your installations, make sure that the integrator on board are updating the layout parallelly so that your finishing stage of the contract, you are already ready with as well layout to refer and approve. So this is the total meaningful cycle of, of, of your, your um, uh, installation phase. And this is a gist of it. It looks very basic, fundamentally uh, basic in nature, but in reality, you see not all the elements are covered by everyone, whether it's a medium project or a, or a, a big project. And it's just because of the lack of awareness, just because not because of lack of resources, it's because of lack of awareness. You have abundant resources. You can always create resources, but the only thing is that you need to create an urgency. You need to create a priority and you need to allocate that time so that you are, you are able to achieve what you need to achieve. So this is the important phase um, that has to be added during installations of every project and specifically fire and security projects. So uh, any questions till now? I'm again and again encouraging uh, uh, you and we have very eminent person uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Benjamin um, from Israel. In fact, I wanted him to be here as a guest. Uh, so welcome, Mr. Benjamin. Uh, and of course, Mena is also there today. Uh, so uh, Mr. Benjamin, you want to say something? Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Our pleasure, sir. Good. So I would uh, definitely want you to uh, talk to my next time when we are touching the security uh, projects. That is next week. So maybe your presence and your your um, expert opinion will help a lot of attendees here. And uh, I look forward to see you on next Sunday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mena, you want to say something? Okay, so I think he's probably busy. So any questions? Yeah. Good. Frequent questioner, Mr. Yogendra Singh. Boliye. Sir, my voice is going. Yes. What you have told me about the cycle of the photo material data sheet, installation, procurement installation, inspection, and built layout. So how it helps to prevent fire? Okay, very good question. Uh, but there's no direct answer. What I mean is that up to be system lagar hai, system perfect hai. Ji. Brilliant. Up to be fire system lagar hai, system perfect hai.
You have to be careful. Uh, we are thinking safety point of view. Okay, so basically, correct narrative is that after you have to protect your life or proper living. Safety means that safety of whom, safety of somebody, right? Safety of either life or property. Correct? No? Yes or no? Yes. So whatever you are installing, आप जो भी लगा रहे हैं फायर सिस्टम और इसका पर्पज क्या है इससे जान बचाना या जो प्रॉपर्टी की सुरक्षा टू प्रिवेंट फायर प्रिवेंशन इज पार्ट ऑफ इट प्रिवेंशन भी अपना फायर प्रोटेक्शन में स्टार्ट करते हैं नाउ वेन यू आर क्लियर अबाउट दिस कोई अगर क्लियर है तो सेकंड साइड क्या है अगर वो सिस्टम ही बराबर नहीं है मतलब प्रॉपरली इंस्टॉल नहीं किया हुआ है उसको हमने जो सोचा है वो नहीं किया है इम्प्लीमेंट है अगर वो दो घंटे का फायर डोर चाहिए आपने एक घंटे का लगा दिया क्योंकि आपने इंस्पेक्शन नहीं किया तो आपको सही प्रिवेंशन मिलेगा या नहीं मिलेगा नहीं मिलेगा तो दिस साइकिल टू प्रिवेंट यूर यूर लाइफ इन ए वो इट इज गोट प्रिवेंट नॉफिस Because you are ensuring that what you have planned, that the safe strategy, the paper you have put out, the drawing you have put out, will in reality be there. So definitely, your safety is protected, right? Yes, sir. Good. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. at least you are um okay so let me just yeah mr sanjay mr sanjay you can unmute are you able to unmute mr sanjay Okay, I don't know. So he's not able to unmute it, so I can't hear it. Okay, so maybe if I miss it, so I'm lowering the hand so that uh, I don't get confused with who all have raised the hand and who are not raised the hand by mistake. So, uh, any any questions so far? Who is the approve the? Who is the approve the shop drive? Is it approved by the project manager or any statutory authority? No, no. It has to be a project manager. So yeah. project manager can be internal, external. Yeah. But the user have yeah. to see and approve it. So okay. thank you. There is no statutory involvement here to the shop thing because your final plans are are going to be the basis of your. Status, of course, not in between. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good. Very good. So, thank you for asking questions in Q and A. There is any questions? So, no Q and A questions. All have been answered. Okay. So, let me just give you the last. piece of this session and then we can end this session on time so i hope it is clear now what what we are going to discuss now let me just give you some sample some random way to give you the uh, insight how the environment will be there during installation phase and how are you going to take care of those uh, situations so during construction we have a lot of services going in vertically horizontally now if you keep it unattended because this is a area where smoke is going to find the way and this is an area it is usually not been considered by most of the integrator or most of the consultants for that matter 
because every consultant is independent. Maybe HVAC guy is only taking the pipe vertically, horizontally. Maybe the plumbing guy is going to do the same. Electrical guy is going to do the same. Fire guy is going to do the same. If it is predominantly one or two common consultants, still they will see that my pipe is already cut and passed through or not, but they will not be able to give a warning or, or, or uh, measure to plug that hole back. Because if you keep these openings open, horizontal or vertical, during construction phase, it is unattended. Finally, maybe it is going to be just painted and put up with a plaster. It will not be fire sealed. Because if you see this wall is technically give you a two hour rated strength because of the RCC that you have. But if suppose this opening is not going to be the same manner, if it is going to be just like a some packing material has been given and painted on and stuff like that, just because of the urgency at the last stage, smoke is definitely going to pass through it. Heat is going to pass through it. And you will have a very, very uh, accidental situation or, or situation which will lead where smoke is going to travel vertically horizontally. So unprotected opening are very, very important and it has to be taken care by the user specifically to ensure that either it has to be taken care by the fire contractor or by architect to ensure that this has been done correctly. Fire alarm system, of course, I can talk and talk on this topic, which is my favorite topic, but then just to give you a quick snapshot here, what is a, what is a gap that you see from the uh, drawings, design layout, and actual installations? And specifically, even if there are shop drawings developed, still there could be gap because even shop drawings predominantly will give you a fire alarm location. In a area, maybe it is going to be a reception. Now in a reception, there's only one legend that has been shown in the drawing as a fire alarm panel. And when installer actually going to uh, implement, looking at that shop drawing, he may not be able to see exact location of that fire alarm panel. So again, he will go and check it at the site condition. If there is any constraint, maybe there is a table fixture, interior thing is going to come at a height where it is supposed to be installed you lay at a say two meter height plus level because somebody had directed, no, no, fire alarm panel, okay, it doesn't look good, put it on the top. And maybe the project manager or installation contractor is going to follow what has been assigned to them or what has been directed and he installed the fire alarm panel as two meter height, what will happen? In reality, when the fire alarm gives you a warning, you are not able to read, you are not able to maintain that, you are not able to operate that panel anyway. So, these are the constraint of limitations your shop drawings are. When, when you're making a shop drawings, it must be separately indicated what is that height of the fire alarm panel? What is that height of the manual call point that you're going to place? Maybe you can have tolerance. You can't have exactly 1.2 meter height that you can get in every floor and every places. But if at all, there is a tolerance that you're given plus minus 200 mm, then at least integrator can follow that tolerance within that tolerance you can install the manacle point, strokes, repeater panels, fire alarm panels, and stuff like that. And I've seen during my audits at various places, fire alarm panel is being placed a area where it is supposed to be hidden. It is purposely or deliberately hidden in a such a way that nobody can see. But the whole intent is gone because fire alarm panel is supposed to be visible. Manual call point is supposed to be visible, accessible at a height not more than 1.2 meter. Because somebody can press it just like that. But if it is kept in an area which is not accessible, not visible, or not operatable, your purpose is entirely gone because just it is not being inspected during construction, or it is not being shown in the drawing correctly, or it is not interpreted rightly by the, by the construction guides. Detector placement, you will not get the exact spacing what you mentioned in the shop drawings or, or design layout, vis-a-vis what you get it at site. You'll have some tolerance. You'll not be able to get five meters precisely. But at least you have some tolerance where you are able to do it. Otherwise, there are many cases where integrator is just following the layout. On top of it, maybe HVC guy will come and follow the duct just below the detector. 
what will happen to that your detector will not be operated quickly sprinklers if they have a very clear obstruction with the cable tray just below the sprinkler head or maybe there is a storage area which is just coming next to the sprinkler head what will happen so this has to be coordinated at site and this is what your inspection phase and this is what your your uh, stage where involvement with your as well layout will come in play so this is very very important uh, i wanted to highlight this uh, small changes so at least you get a insight or intent what what i mean is height and rise are very very common issues you have fantastic hose reels installed at a location in the in the shaft but those hose reels are not able to move are not able to swing so that you can operate easily in the case of emergency because you have a lot of constraint in the shaft your hose reels are there is a specific orientation if you see in the image it has to be upward but then hose reel install is been reverse way then what will happen hose reels are taken tapping from not from riser it is taken tapping from the hydrant wall itself so there are a lot of installations errors defective installations or or poor installations i would say because thought is not been given the hose reel tap has got a, a globe wall but if you cannot operate that globe wall fully then again there is no water water uh, uh, coming into the water flow coming into the hose reel so you need to see that the uh, walls inside the uh, shaft or riser are able to you know operate fully if it is a butterfly wall you make sure that you are able to operate it fully not with a constraint your hose reel should be able to swing it easily and not at a height more than 1 1.2 meter because if you just expect a fire officer or or fire warden or fire marshal to use tools ladder to use the fire hose reel in case of emergency that is not acceptable that's not healthy sign but if it is captured in the drawing well and good but on top of it if it is captured in the drawing and interpreted and installed and implemented at site that is the right scenario so you need to see that everything is in order your drawings and construction activities your sign uh, your painting has been done but painting has been done without the flow indicating onto the riser again that could be because even none of the shop drawings will have this this uh, signages where you are supposed to paint the uh, the riser with the direction of the flow your cabinet size for various dry riser or wet riser or pump uh, service inlet how they are going to be mounted where it is going to be mounted whether they are in a box or they are open if it is a box then whether it is a, with a key or without a key if it is a with a glass or without a glass so these are all instruction requirement at many places you see a brushing inlet which is a service inlet in a vegetable in a in an area where it is not acceptable all plants with with uh, you know a vegetation around you cannot see it just after insulation there are a lot of vehicle parking there the car is hiding the breaching in that you can't see it there is no label these are all small small gaps again it's a problem with the insulations not with the with the intent sprinkler too many problems too many issues because it's the most most complex systems on the earth that are uh, Uh, that are to be designed and on top of it it has to be implemented now most of the places where sprinkler system is designed with just a pipe schedule method that means one inch pipe two sprinklers and that's how the pipe schedule method is going to be allowed in the codes and standard but technically that's not a, a requirement your requirement is in the shop drawings you are able to produce the calculations and justifying the demand and supply of The, the entire piping how the piping distribution is going to be happening whether i am going to get remotest optimum flow and pressure and that is what your calculation is going to do that and code is insisting and uh, not insisting code is actually encouraging you to do the hydraulic calculations for specifically ordinary plus hazard occupancy light hazard small small occupancy are still allowed with the pipe schedule method but ideally even light hazard have to be Hydraulic calculation because you can optimize a lot of cost. 
so when you do hydraulic calculations is the design label has been has been followed at site or not that is again insurance requirement not necessary that every user is actually knowing that there is a label requirement for every alarm wall every pump house that has to be displayed where hydraulically proven system with right pressure and flow has been indicated there so at any point in time your inspection can be carried out your zone control wall assembly in the riser should have all the right ingredient flow switch pressure switch pressure gauge zone control wall drain test and drain wall everything has to be in order and it is given very clearly in the in the course and standard there are many i can tell you drawings which will have this picture or image reflected in the drawing but not followed on the site we don't know what this flow switch is, is going to do flow switch is connected but it is not connected to the fire alarm panel so because it is not shown in the drawing because it is not inspected at the site test and drain is there but you cannot operate it because there is no drain there is no drain riser connected so these are the all minute issues where you need to see that you are able to achieve it uh, there are many hotel specific installations i have seen where side wall sprinklers or ceiling sprinklers have been placed at a very close to the wall there is a insulation requirement given the nap 13 or in is 15015 what is the minimum and maximum distance to be followed for the sprinkler if there is obstruction how do you deal with the obstructions if there is a height constraint how do you deal with the uh, with the height constraint whether the spacing will reduce or increase and this is to be followed not necessary that your your tender drawings or your design layout will be able to capture this kind of a detailing and it has to be captured in the shop drawings only because by that time you know what is my ceiling height is there any false ceiling or not no false ceiling if the false ceiling is going to be more than 800 mm is it been covered with a sprinkler or not maybe at the design uh, planning stage there was no false ceiling but all of a sudden uh, you have decided that no this area i need to have false ceiling but if the false ceiling is going to be more than 900 mm then you need to protect the area by codes and standard so these are the consideration that that is to be captured and it will followed uh just to tell you there are uh five top reasons which is uh, by nfpa national fire protection association where sprinkler system failed to operate just because it has been shut off kept shut off or closed uh manually so 64% failures just because the system itself have been kept shut off because there is a butterfly wall and there is a leakage person can actually just close it and nobody knows so then requirement what is says that if there is any butterfly wall that you are using on the sprinkler riser it must be connected to the fire alarm panel with tamper switch how many solutions have got tamper switch connected now there are walls with the built in tamper switch available so there is no constant but how many people are aware how many people are actually doing it manual interventions just because i have some expansion happening or some leakage happening i i choose to close or maybe i afraid there are many uh, shopping mall i have seen where they are afraid of operating sprinklers and that's the reason they are deliberately kept the wall off without anybody is noticing it i have seen the mall in bombay i don't know to name it when i visited i saw the wall which was kept closed and i asked him why the wall has been clo closed he said i don't want to take a risk of water falling on my my retail i got a lot of expensive stuff here and i cannot take risk probably they can take a risk of getting a fire in that scenario but they don't take a risk of getting that water fall there technically if your system is going to be more reliable installed correctly tested and uh, approved by many stakeholders you have no chance of operating that by accident so manual intervention is the one that is very uh, key reasons for sprinkler system failures damage components very 7% one one digit reason maybe there is a sprinkler failure there is a alarm wall failure or, or maybe there is a pump itself failure so there could be 7% reason uh, lack of maintenance again 
uh, there could be many times a reason where uh, actually sprinkler system requires very less maintenance. We'll cover that in the in the series that is uh, we have a session uh, during operation and maintenance. But just to tell you, you need a very less maintenance. You don't need a very hefty maintenance. But although there are people who don't even do that, and that will again um, result into a failure of the system operation. And then last and finally, inappropriate, inappropriate system for hazard. And that's when it is important that shop drawings, if in, in case you find any gap, you need to revisit and change the design. Because at that time, maybe that area was just the accounts office, but now all of a sudden architect have decided that account office to be converted into a storage. Then how we deal with that? Is the same detector, is the same sprinkler will do that? No. Because you are not identified the hazard correctly, you are not identified the occupancy correctly, there is a change, but the sprinkler remains the same. I have seen, uh, in fact, I don't know, I mentioned to you one of the warehouse where there was a three basement and it's a 40 feet ceiling warehouse where K80 normal sprinklers were installed. And when I investigated further, probably I found that the consultant, the fire consultant who had designed the system for this using K80 because he didn't have visibility of 40 feet ceiling. He had been given indication that, okay, I will have some operation there. We don't know what operation will come. Go ahead and do it. So you need to see that how you're going to balance it. But then if the shop drawings, the stage would have been identified by that customer, at that stage, definitely he would have known that, okay, I'm going to have a storage here with a robotic stage, with a paper cartoon here. K80 sprinklers will not the right sprinklers to protect that area. So these are the very, very important practical uh, practical issues that, that are available in the country on the ground. And you need to only ensure that there is installation phase. There is a building system, which is the most, most common gap. You have fantastic system individually operating, but they don't talk to each other. Fire alarm is not talking to elevator. Elevator is not talking to security. Security is not talking to the guard management. Fire alarm is not talking to HVC. HVC is not talking to the BMS system. So these are all gaps because you have procedurally or logistically constraint of engaging different consultants and contractors on board. There's no review happening. There's no inspection happening. There is no, there is no design planning or strategy that you have done to implement it at site. So building system integration is the, is the most key challenging and a gap in the industry. And during installations, this, may be, this needs to be validated. Very important. I mean, of course, I've given a very detailed discussion on building system integration on week three, but this is the gap that I want to tell you. Fire and last city review. Is an interface regularly happening with the architect in understanding what is my staircase? What is my staircase ventilation? Is the travel distance being taken care? Is the emergency light has been operated? Is my exit signage where it has been placed? Is my fire doors have been adequately uh, uh, protected or not? What is the direction of the door movement? Is it in the direction of egress or it is in the direction of ingress? So fire and less review is the one that is most critical. And unless until you have a, a specialist on board, FLS review consultant on board, who's going to be a key focal guy, who's going to interface everyone, you will have constant and specifically medium plus projects. And that's the, now there is a trend of engaging FLS consultants and of course our experience is that it is it is um, helping many users. We have been involved in many projects. That's also my experience is that it is a very very crucial role for FLS uh, consultant to interface with user, architect, contractors, OEM, and uh, all the stakeholders who are involved in statutory approvals also to make sure that everything is integrated, everything is uh, regulated. So that's all about uh, the uh, session. Uh, I hope I made a sense in, in tech, talking to you and uh, elaborating you all on these terms, how critically installation phase can help you and, and prevent the further modification or, or making sure that your system intent has been achieved on site. Uh, provided you spent enough time and resources on the installation phase. So any questions till now? Uh, 
the last phase so that we can end here. Uh, any questions? You can raise the hand. No questions? Q and A. Okay, Q and A. There is no question. There are no hands. So that's fine. Uh, probably then um, we can uh, conclude the session today here. But then my again uh, concluding note here is that please ensure that uh, not ensure please please support us in um, spreading the word in the industry about this uh, series that we have been doing in encouraging more and more people to come and join so that they can benefit. You can also benefit them by inviting here in this forum. So this is again a free, uh, no conditions. Uh, it's all it's all available with all the users specifically. But of course, anyone is interested to gain the knowledge, this forum is open for everyone here. So make sure that you are supporting us in this form um, and uh, so that entire society can benefit and that's the reason we are building a nation, a safe and secure nation. So, uh, let us end this, uh, conclude this session with uh, national anthem. What we do? Oh, sorry, I had to ask you these questions uh, before we conclude. Sorry, I forgot. So you can always take back these questions. Identify the gaps in the in your install system that could have rectified during construction phase. How can you ensure that there is no gaps during installation phase based on your facility? And then if there are any gaps right now you identified, which are basically happened during installation phase, how can I plug those gaps? How can I identify and how can I plug those gaps right now? So these are the three questions that you probably can take back. And uh, I would like to hear from you next Sunday if you identify any question and answer on these three key questions. Uh, these are awakening questions. And I'm sure you will be able to find answers when you start uh, asking these questions on your own for your facility. So, thank you so much. <laughs>